Welcome back to Insurance Influencers. I'm Cody Askins and I'm excited. I got a big guest today, a dude that put up over 100,000 in a month one time. I'm telling you what, my good buddy, he's an insurance freak and I'm excited to interview him, Matt Walker with the FFL Revolution. Matt, thanks buddy, I appreciate you being on. It's, it's an honor to be here, Cody, and I appreciate you uh, allowing me to, uh, to share my knowledge with you. Yeah, Matt's someone that um, I've known for a few years. We've always got along really well. Um, just seem to see eye to eye on, on a lot of stuff. Um, he is an absolute stud at what he does. But, but before we get to what he's doing now, which is helping a lot of insurance agents, like anyone that's on your team that writes always does over 10K, which is super impressive, right? Because a lot of places can tout big numbers, but when you can like, you know what I mean? put some put some freaking specific numbers to it and show it off. I think it's always impressive. Um, but I want to start with you, man. Um, tell us a little about you, where you're from, you know, family and, and all that. Absolutely. Absolutely. More than happy to. Uh, I live in, in Waterford, Connecticut, and I got into the insurance industry about, uh, I got my license about three years ago. Uh, you, I was personal training, had my indoor baseball facility, Oh, was was having fun doing that, but just really wasn't content where I was at, Cody, making about sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. Uh, my wife was a nurse at the time, you know, starting to bring up a young family. I have a two and three year old boy and a girl, and and just got kind of at the point where you know we, we weren't broke by any stretch of the imagination. We we had pretty low expenses, living in a you know living in a condo and all that, and and uh, but I just knew I wasn't content, and um, actually had to have the fortune of of meeting. Um, Sean Mike, our president of Family First Life, I was actually training him uh, about four or five times a week, and he was paying me, you know, seventy dollars a clip for a one-on-one -on -one session. Yeah, showing. Yeah, that's right. Showing up in a different vehicle every every time he came, and bought this brand new house over in Old Black Point. Which, if you live by me, you know that that's you know you, there isn't a house for a shade under you know two million dollars over there. So I'm just aside from the money, it was his, it was his attitude, it was energy, his passion. Just very, I didn't even know at the, at the time, you know, when we first started, first started training him, mean, what he did, I just said, man, I, I want to go where that guy's going. Like, I don't know what he does, I don't know what his deal is, but like, I want to go where he's going. Um, and uh, just kind of started talking one day about what he did. And, and uh, I said, well, obviously, you know, you make a lot of money being the president of the company. You know, what are your average agents doing? And he's just throwing out these like Nintendo numbers that didn't make any sense to me. And initially I was kind of skeptical, but I'd known Sean for a little while and I was just kind of like, you know what? I trusted him and I'm like, I'd be crazy not to at least give this a shot and see how it goes. And, uh, so I went and got my license in, um, the beginning of 2016, doing it very part time, doing the personal training thing in my indoor baseball facility. And, uh, you know, started seeing, uh, you go out on a weekend and make three thousand, three, four thousand dollars in a weekend, working some leads, working some age leads and sitting there going like, Oh my God, like this is what I make in a, you know, a month at the gym, this is one, well, a few hours of work on a Saturday. I'm like, okay, this is real. This is real. And that kind of like hooked me, you know? So um, I sat down with my wife, ended of December. So I remember the conversation very well, ended December, 2016 and said, Hey babe, you know, I'm, I mean, she saw what, what it was doing for our, for, for us. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to go into this full time. You know, and I think it, and it, you know, at, at the end of the day, it was like, Sean always said, you know, the biggest, you know, the, the biggest risk was, okay, you'll have your insurance license. And I kind of always, I just kind of looked at it like that. I took a few grand, invested it in leads and, and never really looked back. Now, was it a huge risk? I mean, uh, it was, you could say it was a little bit. I closed up shop. I mean, I wasn't working a nine to five per se, but it was similar in the sense of like, I had my steady clientele. I knew what I was making. If I had a few people that fall off, I knew what I was making every single month. And, um, I just dove in, dove in full bore and uh, just really haven't looked back since. That's one of the things, that's a super awesome story, but that's one of the things that we hear the most and I get the most amount of questions about is, Cody, I'm part-time, you know, should I really do it? Should I really go for it? Uh, what's unique about you is you're making 60, 70 K a year, you know, five, six grand a month, solid income and above average income. Um, you know, maybe not in Connecticut, but in, especially in Missouri. Uh, but just in general, you freaking went for it, you know. You you saw the potential. You're probably someone that you know, sports background, all that. Obviously, I've I've, I've heard, and I want you to share at some point too. Is uh, but just in general, you're probably someone that's like, if he's doing it, I can do it, you know. And so, uh, talk about that a little bit, because to, to be able to pull the trigger and go for it, um, if you took a disc assessment, you'd probably be at a uh, uh, high D, high I, you know. I'm just guessing. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> 
For me, it was like, I, so just to kind of even backpedal a little bit further, like I, I, I've always been obsessed with, I've always wanted to be in the special forces. Okay. That was something I've always wanted to do. And um, my wife knew that's what I was, you know, she knew that about me when we met. And I was actually planning on leaving to go and do that. I had done all my tests and everything and gotten to where I'd, probably one of my biggest regrets in life is not being in the military. I just, I just, I just, I just love it. I love, I just love our, our, our military and, yep. and, um, and I've got buddies that serve. And so um, there's just something about it that I just, I've always been really, really drawn to. I think it's that sense of team, that sense of community, that sense of just uh, the, the, the competitive nature of it. Um, and, you know, the fact that a lot of folks said, you know, that, that, you know, there's only so many that make it, that, that was always very intriguing to me. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we were starting to have a young family, um, kind of, kind of sat down and realized that this probably wasn't, probably wasn't going to be the best thing. Um, if, if I was going to be a family man to, to go and pursue that dream. So, uh, you know, my biggest passion in life is I've always known I've wanted to help a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to provide for my family in the manner that's best in the best interest of our family, not based on what's in our account, you know, what we want to do. I want to be able to help my parents out who, who were kind of in a tight situation. Um, I want to be able to give back to my, my outer circle. So it's like I had a buddy of mine who had a cancer benefit a few years back and was able to donate like 500 bucks. And I'm just like, how can I get to the point where I can donate 5,000, 15,000, 20,000? So for me, it was like I, what I was doing at that moment in time, I knew wasn't going to be able to fulfill all my passions. I thought that I, if I did like the military, that would fulfill my, um, you know, that, that I could make some sort of tangible difference. But this is the next best avenue that I've found to be able to do that. From an income standpoint, it's not about money to me. Um, it's, it's, to me, it's like money's just paper. It's, but it's what you can do with it, you know, to be able to give back in a massive way. And like I measure everything on like the rocking chair test. If I'm 75, 80, 85 years old and looking back on my life, reflecting upon my life, I want to know that I made some sort of difference. Mm. So for shifting over from part time to full time, when I saw when I saw the potential, I, I immediately recognized that this was a this was an avenue that would allow me to truly fulfill my passion uh, and really achieve my why. And so, um, and then, I, and then once I dove in at that point, it was, I'm just like, I'm 110% into whatever I'm doing at that moment in time. So at that time it was insurance. I'm 110% in, I'm not going to fail. What am I going to do? Quit on my wife and kids? Right. Like it's not an option. You know, I think success becomes really easy when, when failure really isn't an option. You know, you get back into a corner and, and, uh, it's me. It's like, how far can I get ahead of everything? How far, am I, how, far, how far I can get ahead of my lead bill, my personal bills. Like I want to get so far ahead. Like I'm not, I got, you know, I'm sure you're a football fan. Like I don't want to be up uh, in the NFL. I don't want to be, up, I don't want to be up, you know, two scores at the half, three scores at the half. Like anything can happen in an NFL football game. Like I want to be up like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 scores. I've always kind of taken that approach with everything that I've done. And um, yeah, I mean, and, and the transition from full-time to part-time, I don't, Initially, it was very part-time, very, very half-heartedly, you know, working a weekend here and there. But then as I was approaching full-time, it was really, my part-time schedule was probably similar to a lot of folks' full-time schedule. You know, I think like, uh, it's like a buddy of mine, Eric Schmidt, who came over from the car business, was in the car business for 23, 24 years. He was working about 50, 60 hours a week, making 180, 190 grand, uh, you know, uh, a year over there, but, but not able to spend a lot of time with his family. Um, I mean, the dealership basically owned him, but, uh, when he transitioned, he knew he wanted to get out and he saw what I was doing. And he, when he wasn't at the dealership on that transition, I mean, he was still running, he was able to run 15 appointments a week. Like, so when he wasn't at the dealership, he was running part-time. So like everyone's definition of part-time for me, like if you're going to do it part-time, you definitely have to be able to get in front of you got to get in front of a bunch of families right away to know if it's something that's going to be for you or not. How, and, and how many is a bunch? Like, like how, how, how many a week? I, we'll dive in deeper later, but. I think part-time you got to be, I think you can run 15 appointments a week part-time. I, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's unreasonable. I think you can run, if, if you're working a nine to five, I think you can run a few, you know, you can run a few appointments at night during the week. And I think you can stack a weekend, you know. That's uh, strong, for, man. That's strong. Because most agents aren't even running 15 appointments full-time. I bet the average insurance agent in the country runs le definitely runs less than five a week out of all the full-time agents, which is just a, is a freaking joke. One thing I want to transition to real quick is um, I always find that ex-athletes tend to do very well in our industry. 
Walk me through that because because I know you're an ex you know because I, 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 I know your background a little bit. So I love athletes as well. Athletes and military. I would even add military. That's good. I think it's a, it's so systematic. We have it's everything is very very system driven. No matter what IMO, FMO, NMO, whatever you want to call it, where you're at, there's there's some sort of system. And and for me, like the folks that brought me in, who I, I knew that they were successful, and I knew that they knew a lot more than me. Like it's kind of like I wouldn't. You know, if I had someone come over to my house to, 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 to do plumbing, you know, I'm not going to say, hey, man, hey, Tom, like you need to, you know, you need to bring a snake. Like that, that, that's what they do. I, I would never, <laughs> I would never question them. So like I just, for me, it was very simple. I've always been a, like a yes coach guy. Like I just, I, I, I've had some great coaches in my career. I had coaches I'd want to run through a brick wall for. So like if I could somehow get that out of the insurance, you know, industry, the folks, I've just always really trusted, um, and, and trust is a, it, you know, it's a tough thing, especially if you're coming over from another agency or you're, you've been kind of burned in the industry or, or maybe, you know, you just, you're coming from a job where you just weren't treated well. And so it's, uh, you know, I do believe trust is, de- is earned. Um, it took me a minute, but I knew that these folks that, that were my mentors and Sean's one of my mentors, I knew like they, they were way ahead of where I wanted to be. So I just figured I'm just going to, whatever they tell me to do, like if they tell me to buy 50 leads, I'll buy 50 leads. If I don't have the money to buy 50 leads, like I'll borrow some money from somebody and pay them back or take out a loan or a credit card. Like I just, I, I just trusted, I just trusted them. And I just, that's, so that's why I think athletes typically do very well because it's just tell me what to do and I'll do it. This thing was very visual for me. Like I was watching some of the top producers in the company. I was watching how many leads they were buying. I was watching how many appointments they were running. I was watching what they did in the phones. I was watching how they overcame objections. I was watching, I was just, I went to all the trainings. I watched all the videos. And like, for me, this thing is very visual. If I can just, you know, I always joke around, like you just gotta be a really good thief. Like I just steal everybody's ideas and then kind of spin it into my own kind of hybrid model. Yep. You know, so if I can just watch everyone that's having a lot of success and just, kind of replicate that into my own style you know it's pretty pretty easy what was your athletic background so I played baseball um I played I played d1 ball had a couple opportunities to play some pro ball I uh, didn't work out I wanted to be a pro ball player that's what I want to do my whole life and um and uh you know did, didn't work out and that's kind of when I started the personal training and started my own uh, uh indoor baseball facility helping helping guys coaching I, I love coaching I really do love coaching um I'm, I'm intense. I'm passionate. And, uh, you know, I just, so I just strip with the, you know, the problem, with, the problem with coaching is it's just, it doesn't, it, it doesn't pay enough to be able to fulfill my passion, you know? So I kind of take that same mindset into the whole insurance deal. Where's your, where, where's your, cause, cause you're a very driven individual. You could just feel it, right? I, like I can feel it through the camera. People watching live right now, you can feel it. Uh, wh- where's that drive come from? <laughs> where's the drive come from? Right. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just, I think the drive comes from just me wanting to, I just want to help people, man. Like I just, I don't, it's not that, it's not much deeper than that. Um, every successful person, every successful person I've ever talked to, interviewed, mentors, et cetera, they've just, they've got this, it's, it's almost like something you can't explain, but it's just like an it factor, you know? I mean, and, and always just meeting you and talking to you, you could just tell like you freaking got it, you know? Um, Let's jump into you as an agent. Uh, walk us through your first, you know, I'm, you know, I'm still running my business. I'm a part-time agent. Like your first few months, your first year, like walk us, what, how was Matt as a new agent? Yeah. Um, of course, hindsight's always 2020, but if there's a lot of things I would have changed about myself, but as a brand new agent, I, I had a pretty, pretty strong first couple of months in my mind at the time. And I'd issued like 30, yeah, you know, I think like my first month I issued like 13 grand was real pumped about it. Hmm. Next month I issued like 15 and working a lot of age leads, working some new stuff, but primarily age leads, just trying to get, put some money in my account to reinvent, be able to reinvest. That was part-time or first full-time. That was, oh, I, I'm sorry. I'll back up a little bit. That was transitioning into, that was my first full couple full-time months. Okay. Okay. Um, so part-time it was, I was working, doing my personal training thing. So personal training, I was doing classes at about 5 a.m. Um, my first, the first class was, was 5 a.m. And, and usually getting out around, uh, you know, seven, 
seven, eight o'clock, but there were some nights I could have, I could, I could sneak off a little bit sooner. So there was a few nights where like I would run appointments. Um, if I could find some, you know, relatively local appointments, I'd try to run appointments from like six to like eight thirty nine PM as late as people would meet me. And then, um, I would try to, I would try to stack a weekend. You know, I would run, you know, it's funny, we come from a society and, and from a mindset, at least even in my family where it's like, you don't work, you know, weekends are sacred, they're for family time, this and that, and all, you know, um, but the folks that I was working with who were making a lot of money, you know, a lot more money than I was said, well, no, if you're, if you need to make money and you're trying to transition, like you need to, you need to work the weekend. I said, okay, sure. So I, I uh, worked, I was working, I would try to stack as many as I could, as many as appointments as I could on a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, and my whole deal is if, if you're not content where you are and you like, you don't have, no one has to work the weekends. I don't tell any, I don't tell any of my agents. We're all independent at the end of the day. You don't have to work the weekends, but if you're not content where you're at, or if you're trying to transition into this full time, you know, you need to work the weekends. It's when everyone's home. It's when everyone's in a good mood. And typically that's when I, you know, make most of my sales on the weekend. So, um, so yeah, I would say, you know, a few appointments, probably like a, you know, Tuesday and Thursday, usually got a little bit earlier. So Tuesday and Thursday, I'd, I'd run six, you know, maybe two, maybe two, three appointments, whatever I could do. Um, not a lot during the week. And then I would just try to run like as just as many as I possibly could. What number it was just however the, the max amount that I possibly could. Yep. You know, if it was five, it was five. If it was eight, it was eight. If it was three, it was three. It was just whatever I could do. And, and, and then you, and when, and when did you find time for, for dials? Did you door knock? Did you set appointments? Did you have a setter? Um, I was, I would go into my car at the gym and I'd make dials like in between clients and things like that. Um, especially final, I mean, final expense. Cause I was getting a good amount of final expense mail to start before Facebook leads and all that. Um, so, uh, I would, I would call during the day kind of at work. I mean, per, be honest, like personal trainers, it's not a real taxing profession. So, I mean, I would, I would, you know, figure out ways to dial in between appointments, you know, there's times I'd dial and like I'd have the client, you know, I'd have one of my clients like doing, you know, burpees or whatever. I'm like, I'm like on the side, like making phone calls and they're like, what's next? I'm like, what? I'm like, oh yeah, three sets. You got three, you got three, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I would just find ways that, you know, when I got home, I, I would dial at night. I would dial from like, if I got home at six o'clock, seven, like depending on the night, seven o'clock, like I would just, I would just spend some time um, either in my car there's, you know, there's some nights where like, you know, I got, I had a baby girl at the time. So like, I didn't want to wake her up. So like I'm dialing my car outside before I got home just to try to fill up, fill up any gaps in my schedule. Um, but yeah. That's awesome, man. Uh, f f transition fast forward a, a, a few months to, to full time. Now walk us through your week as a, as an agent, you know, and what was going on there? Yeah. So full time, and I, I'll, I won't forget the day it was, I was working a lot of age stuff. I was getting a few new leads here and there. And I just remember talking to Sean and going, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta dive in. You know, I just, I, I keep, and he's like, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, so I just decided to go and buy a bunch of fresh leads. And um, I literally sat down with my, and just, just I just, it just, it was after one weekend I made a few big sales and put like four grand in my account. And I said, babe, this is like, this is it. I'm leaving what I'm doing. I'm closing up shop and I'm going full time. And I, um, my first month I issued, you know, I issued like 13 grand, my second month, 15 grand. And, um, I remember feeling so good and loving life. And like, and then I, and then I started getting my first few chargebacks and, sh and going, Oh man, there is a catch to this, you know? And, I think a lot of agents, you know, they get their first few chargebacks and that's when they're like all the folks that told them this was too good to be true. Oh, it's a pyramid scheme. Oh, insurance is a, life insurance is a racket. You know, be careful. Um, that's when they, they, they kind of tuck tail and a lot of agents, you know, tend to tuck tail and run. I looked at it like a challenge. Um, my, my mentor said it's part of the business. You're going to have that happen. And if you just keep writing and selling it, uh, it all, it all works itself out. So I just listened to him and I stayed, you know, I, I kept plugging and, and, um, you know, eventually, so after my first year, I, I got to the point where I was issuing over 20,000 a month. I issued about a uh, couple, couple annuities in there, but I issued about 243,000, um, at the end of it. So January, February, um, 
13,000, 15,000. And then I had a couple low months, but then I had some, I had some big months, but the average ended up being, you know, it ended up being about 20,000 a month at the, uh, when all said and done. And I, but I had to, like, I think if you're an agent and you're, you're, you're just starting this thing full time, like if you're not issuing at least 15 grand a month, you know, with your lead expenses and, you know, depending on your compensation level, I don't think you're doing what you really truly need to do. Um, everyone's goals are different now, but if you're, if this is the only thing that you're doing, like for me, it was, I had to make at least that to yeah. do what I, what I need to do for my family. So your first year, um, what, what did, what did the numbers look like? Like, um, how many leads, how many sets, sits, sells, commission, you know, kind of walk us through, um, a, a week and like some of the numbers behind it. Sure. Sure. There, um, there weren't a lot of mortgage leads available. Um, and I was running a primarily final expense. Um, I was probably running, I was probably running, you know, solid 15, 15 appointments a week, 15 to 20, you know, 15 to 20 appointments. Um, sits actually, actually running. Actually, actually, yeah, actually, well said, yeah, setting 15 to 20, you know, um, you know, obviously you're going to get people that, that no show you or, you know, folks that aren't going to be there. But, um, but yeah, I was set, I was setting 15 to 20 when I first started and realized that as I progressed that that just, you know, wasn't just simply wasn't enough. Mm, that's good, man. Um, how many were you out of 15 or 20? Were you sitting with 10, 10, 10, 10, 12? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Nine, probably nine, nine to 12, depending if it was, you know, let's face it, final expense, you're going to get a little bit you know, higher no show ratio. So, um, yeah, I was probably, I was probably sitting with nine to 12. How many would you close out of that on average back then? Obviously you're better now, but when I first started, probably, probably 40, 50, 50%. Okay. About half. That's solid. That's solid. Okay. Perfect. Um, let's, I want to jump straight into because I know we got a little time left. What was your, you did 243K your first full, full year, first full-time year, um, which is freaking crazy, right? I mean, it's, it's awesome. Um, what was the second year like? It was definitely game-changing income-wise for me, for my family. Um, I just, after the first year, I kind of evaluated where I was at. I realized I wasn't content where I, where I was at and, uh, needed to make a change. I mean, I was dumping back into the business and things like that, but, um, okay. And, and I don't, I don't want to interrupt, but you just said something that I, that I freaking love. Um, and every successful person that's like, you're probably not even like super content now. Um, you know, and you're probably making even more now than you were then. Uh, it, have you noticed that too, about like successful people? Um, Never content. Yeah, man. I mean, and it's not like we're greedy. We're just, we just think we can do better. Well, I can, if, I mean, but uh, I can help a lot more people. Like I can help, like I just, uh, I gave my dad, my parents a couple grand uh, last week for my, I've got a much younger sister that goes to Florida Gulf Coast University. And I, you know, I, I gave my parents a couple thousand dollars to help out with tuition. Um, you know, I just, the, the more, I'm never content because it, I'm not where I want to be in, in terms of being able to help people on a large scale yet. And that's just, it's really that simple. It's not much deeper than that. Mm. So, Gosh. but that, yeah, I agree. I, I don't think anybody, I'm never, it's not, it's not a money thing. It's just, it's just simply not a money thing. It's just, I'm just not where I want to be in terms of being able to, again, just help as many folks as possible. Totally. Um, well, and if it was a money thing, you would have like, you would have settled at 243, you know, yeah. like most agents, I mean, freaking one percent of agents are putting up two hundred fifty k a year. You know, it's just true. Um, so I, I, gosh, I, I freaking love that. Okay, so you told me that you told me the number that you put up your uh, it, your second year. Uh, say that, say that again for the audience now. So it was five hundred and one thousand. I got to cheat a little bit. Nine hundred and seventy four dollars and thirty seven cents. Five hundred and one k second full time year. What do you attribute that to? primarily uh, more activity, you know, and I, I think it's really important. Like, I don't, I don't want to be held up on a pedestal or anything like that. Like to me, I, I don't really think I'm anything special at all. Uh, for me, it was, it was more activity, um, becoming really passionate about what I was doing and really, really transparent. 
You know, I think um, transparency is just so, we work with primarily, you know, most of us agents, we're working with middle income America, in some cases, lower, lower middle income America. And I think we, that's the most guarded and most delicate population there because mm-hmm. those folks are the ones that are being taken advantage of left or right. So what I did, I think my first year, I was sitting with a, a decent amount of folks every week, but I was making everything really transactional. You know, I, and so uh, one thing that I did was I, I really, I really started to invoke a lot more emotional value, but then I also, I also increased my transparency. And I think transparency in this industry in general is so imperative, whether it's, whether it's the clients that you're sitting with or the agents that you're working with, people looking to make a move, come over, like transparency is so insanely important. When I sit down with it, when I sit down with a, with a, with a uh, family, I let them know exactly why I'm there. I let them know exactly how I got their information. I pull up in a Cadillac. Like it, you know, I used to think that was pretentious. Um, I wear a polo, a pair of jeans. I pull up in a Cadillac. Like what the heck? Like I work hard, you know, I work hard for my family. I work hard to protect families. So I'm um, just kind of my whole, my whole deal. Like I would just, um, you know, and I sit down with a, with a, with, with some folks and, and let them know that, you know, what I'm here to do. Here's here. So I got, if it was a mortgage protection lead, here's how I got your information. We work with these big mail houses. They send these things out in flying colors. You probably got them in, you know, pink, yellow, green, blue. And they laughed. They said, yep. I said, so we get a very small percentage of these things back. Um, and which is still a lot because there's a lot of people buying houses, a lot of people refinancing, as you can imagine. I don't work with anybody that has, I, I don't do any door knocking. I don't do any cold calling. Um, I don't do any networking. I only sit down with folks that have requested our help that have sent one of these cards back into us. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, that being said, Tom, what, one thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to shoot you really straight. You know, one thing I'm going to, I can guarantee is I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to treat you, you know, Cody, I'm going to treat you like you're my brother. You know, that being said, you say something silly, I'm going to call you out on it. You know, you, you, one thing that I know about middle and middle income America, which is pretty, you know, those are the majority of the folks that I sit with um, is we're a guarded population. You know, you know, someone that's been screwed over by somebody, maybe was a victim to identity theft or couldn't retire when they wanted to retire due to their way their portfolio was structured. So, um, you know, I think it's just really important that, you know, you get the truth. And so that's one thing I'm going to do with you is I'm going to treat you just like you're my brother. Um, mm. You know, and, and I think that's all, all we really, really can ever ask for. And the clients just kind of start to become at ease I let them know that what my, my commitment is to, is to be able to help them and put them in a better situation than I found them in. Um, if there is a need, which in most cases there is because they filled up the card, they filled up the form. Um, and you know, if I can put them in a better situation and in the, in the, in the process provide for my own family, you know, to me, that's the gift that keeps on giving. And I just, I just, I, I want to know, I, I think that's kind of, I know I went a little bit deep kind of like into, you know, in home and all that, but that's like, good. I just want, transparency is just so important. I think if the client knows that you're genuine, that they're there, you're there for them and you're, you're being very transparent about the whole process. It gets, re- dude, this business gets insanely easy, insanely easy, like so easy. That's all they want. They just want you to be real. They don't want to be sold. They just want to know. They just want to know that they can trust you, that you're out for the best. And if you're a brand new agent, doesn't matter. Like you, they don't want a perfect insurance robot. Like they just want you, they just want to know that you're out for their, for them. You know, Hey Tom, I just, I don't know. I don't really know the answer to this question right here. So I'm just going to get my, I'm going to get my manager. Or I'm going to get my product specialist on the phone and just ask them real quick. You know, so that's good. Um, that's real good feedback for, for those that think that they have to, uh, I mean, you know, trick people or lie or, or anything, you know, I, I love how direct you are, you know, uh, I think that's awesome. Eliminate the smoking mirrors. Just, you got to eliminate the smoking mirrors. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's an agency, you know, life insurance has that stigma. Unfortunately, we're all battling it. You know, there's this trust barrier, especially with middle America. And, um, it's just, it makes the process very seamless. If we just, just, just call it, call it the way it is, you know, what's your t-shirt say? My t-shirt says humble and hungry. Dude. I like that, man. Where'd you get that? Hungry. You know, it's, um, I love that. That's good. That's good. Yeah. You can tell you're hungry, bro. You can, you can really tell. Uh, what are some tips for, we got a few more minutes left. Um, what would you like to say to, you know, an agent out there struggling? If you could help somebody right now, what, what, what would you say? Well, first I think you have to, 
I think the first question you have to ask is, is do I, um, do I believe in the person that brought me in? Mm. You know, I think that's a really, if you don't, cause if you don't believe in the person that's mentoring you or the person that brought you into the business, it makes it very, very difficult. If you believe in that person, then just trust them, you know, trust, trust him, trust her as to what they're telling you, because the odds are they've been there. Um, they know what you're going through and they, they know how to, to overcome whatever it is that you're going through to get to the next level. Um, I think uh, the biggest, my biggest advice for new agents would be because a lot, a lot of us, and, and I was, you know, I, I was there for a little bit. Um, you, you can't tiptoe. You can't just kind of tiptoe in the water. You have to dive in. I, I think we, we live in a society where it's, it's really easy to get loans. Yeah. Like I think the, the the only really difficult loan to get, you know, where the underwriting is really stringent is, you know, getting a mortgage. Um, but other than that, like people are, the personal savings rates way down. People are getting loans left and right. Like, you know, take a chance and invest in your business. You know, I always, all, all the agents that I speak with, it's like, I don't, we don't charge any fees. Like we don't make you, you know, it's going to cost you $500 or a thousand dollars to join, but it's, but this is a business venture. Like we're all adults and we're business owners. So that like, I would, I have to ask every single person that I talk to, like how much capital would you say you have? Just like a, you know, someone that opens up a subway or a pizza shop or, or whatever, you have to have some capital to be able to, to be able to invest in your business. Why would we treat this any different? So mm. um, my biggest advice to the folks that are kind of tiptoeing um, and trying to figure out this is for them is, is dive in, um, get a loan, 3,000, 4,000, 6,000, open up a credit card, invest in yourself, invest in your business. Now, I think what happens a lot of times with new agents is they, they, they tiptoe and they buy 50, you know, they buy 10, 15, 20 Facebook leads and let's call it the way it is. Yeah. Like, let's just call it the way it is you buy 15, 20 Facebook leads, like you're going to get some bad, you're going to get a couple bad numbers. You're going to get a few people that thought it was free. You're going to get yep. some people that hung up on you. You're going to get some people that are so jacked up. You can always only write them a guaranteed issue product for $30 a month. Um, you know, so I think you have to stack the odds in your favor. And then we do that. And then all the folks that told you this is a pyramid scheme. This is a racket. Oh, I tried that once and failed miserably. The folks that are really more scared that you might actually succeed and, and disprove yeah. everything that they've ever known and been taught. Those same folks were now giving validity to what they're saying. Um, so only because you didn't stack the odds in your favor. At the peak of, at the peak of your half a million dollar year, how many leads were you buying? So just like last year, you know, in this year, I, I probably bought, well, I have to have 40 to 50 fresh leads every single week. If my numbers aren't where that, if my numbers now, now here's the deal. At one point I was probably getting more leads than that. Um, this is a game of repetition. So like I would like for new agents, like we should be screaming about what I scream about is if you're a new agent or you're coming over from another, another <clears throat> organization and you're not used to working the kind of leads that we work, then you probably need more. Like it's, we, we, we tiptoe so much and we just, you know, uh, maybe I'll, we always go like, hmm, should I, should I buy the 30 or 50? You know, let me play it safe and go with the 30. Like it should, the thought process should be, you know, whether to get, it should always be about getting more because you have to, this is a numbers game. Like if we just break the numbers down, let's just say, I mean, let's just say you're at a, you know, whatever, well, let's say you're at a hundred percent compensation level for round numbers. And your average sale, you make, let's just say 800 to a thousand bucks, right? If you buy 20, 25 leads, like you'll probably get, you'll probably make a profit, but if you buy 50 or 60, your profit will be exponential. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the ROI grows. Yeah. It's yeah. not, the profitability isn't linear. It's, it's, it's exponential. You know, it's, if you have, if, you know, 20 to 25 Facebook leads and your profits, $2,000, it doesn't mean if you buy 50, 60, your profit's going to be 5,000. You might go, you might go right 10, 12,000, yep. you know? So um, it's really just a, it's a very simple, it's a, it's a number. If you stack the odds in your favor, it really comes down to this. If you stack the odds in your favor, it's really hard to fail. And if you're a new agent, <coughs> aside from the fact that you need to stack the odds in your favor, in order to get really good and master your craft, you have to sit with more folks. You yep. have to sit with more families. I was talking to a guy the other day who was from a, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not mentioning the name, but a, a company where they had some kind of misleading bait and switch type leads. He said, I said, and they were doing a lot, they, but they were writing a lot of business over there. And I said, well, what do you, and he, he was kind of, he was initially not doing what he was doing 
um, you know, uh, cement wise over there here. And I said, well, what do you attribute that to? He said, well, he said, you know, over there, even though the leads were really, really crappy, um, we were just, we we're putting in massive activity. Like we're on the phones all day. I said, I go, okay, so let's just back up a second. What was that one word that you just said, like just a second ago? He said, well, crappy lead. No, no, the other one, activity. I said, bingo. So if you were to take, let's just say you were to take that same activity that you had over there, and then you were actually on the crappy leads, but we took that same activity and then we put it into fresh, like let's just say Facebook leads. Yeah. Like how, you know, what would your production be then? He's like, that's a good point. Well, why do you think, well, you know, my agents are kind of, you know, they're just, they're, they're just not sure if I go, well, but that's, but that's the missing piece. Mm -hmm. So it's activity always wins. Yeah. Yeah. You said, you, you said that, you said that earlier, massive activity always wins. You need to put that always. on, you need to put that on a freaking t-shirt. I love that. The numbers, they, they always, if you put the massive activity in, <coughs> there's weeks I've got, I've got bad weeks, just like anybody else. I've got, a, I have bad days like anybody else, but as long as I don't, I don't recycle negative energy into like, if I have a bad day, if you start to get negative, you, you start to see this kind of downward spiral. You get all these charge back. Like I just like, I look at every closed door. Like this is just a, like, all right, on to the next, on to the next, flush it out, go to the next. Maybe it's my baseball mentality. But like, if you just look at it like that um, and you're, you're staying positive and you're putting in the constant activity, um, our, my full time, uh, we, we try to get people to, to run 25, 30 appointments a week. Yeah, and, and, and your transition is something I want to talk about it specifically. Um, you've got a team, quarter million a month. All your active agents are doing it. You know, your average active agent does over 10K a, week, a month. Um, what's, talk about team building and recruiting. And we, we got a couple minutes real quick, but talk about like that side of the business that you're really diving into now and having some success with. Yeah, just like, I mean, just like, just like with the uh, clients that I sit with, I think transparency is massive. Um, I'm really big on like, if I can show you exactly what I'm doing, if I can show you, like I, I post my deposits weekly. Hmm. <laughs> it's not in a braggadocious or like conceited, you know, arrogant type of manner. I just, I want to share the opportunity, you know, and I want to, I want to know like the, you know, especially like I was, I went to a, I was going, uh, I was down the road the other day and I was, I stopped at a light and there's some construction workers and they just a couple people look like I'm not, I've got a lot of blue collar friends and things like that, but they just, they look miserable. And I've just, I empathize for the people that aren't happy where they're at. Hmm. You know, I, I don't look down upon any profession. I have a, uh, you know, again, I'm from blue collar America, but like, if you're not happy where you are, I empathize for your situation. And I, I feel like it's important to share the, the, the opportunity. Um, I speak to a lot of agents daily, um, coming over from other agencies where they, you know, you know, you can tell some are more guarded than others. They've, they've been, they feel like they've been, um, they've been wronged or, um, you know, just, it's, uh, there's some delicate agents out there. So I just, I'm, I'm big on being really, really transparent. Here's six, seven minutes about what we do in terms of training leads, vested renewals, our bonus structure, um, no contract. Like I just, I, I tell them, here's what we do. I, like I'm going to, I'll, I'll, every interview, that's how I, it's how I set it up. You know, I'm going to, it's a real quick brief introduction. And then it's, you know, Tom, I'm going to just kind of go over exactly what we're about, what our, what we do and do you, about five, six minutes. And then if you have any questions at the end, let me know. Do you do those on a call or on a video or? I just, well, I don't, I just do, I just, you know, it just regular interviews. People call me up, you know, whether it's from a zip ad or from Facebook ad or whatever it is. And I just, I treat every single one the same. And um, I'm just ultra transparent um, for the agents that do come in. Um, if I can get them plugged into our system and to our culture, um, if we're at the office, if they can see me, Eric, you know, my buddy, Eric, who's a monster, Marisa, we've got like, we've got five, six, you know, 25 K plus producers. If, if I can just get you here, funnel you in here and get you around it. To me, this whole thing is just very visual. Like we're talking about earlier, it's all systematic and very visual. So if I can just get folks, folks plugged in and watch how we do it, like it's, that's it. Um, and if, and if someone's fighting me, asking me a lot of questions, like already giving me reasons why this isn't going to work out. Like I'm I just, I'm not going to force you to do anything thing you don't want to. I just like, uh, but I'll just, I'll, I'll call them out on it. I'll say, yeah. you know what, Tom, you've already given me four or five reasons why this probably isn't going to work out. And this is getting kind of exhausting for me. I'm really busy. I have a lot of interviews left today and I've got some folks that I got to meet with uh, to protect in order to provide for my own family. So, um, you know, I, I don't think this is going to be a good fit. I don't think this is a road that you or I want to go down.
you know, I just don't think it's going to be a good fit for either of us. Um, but I do appreciate, you know, appreciate your time and, and you reaching out to us and, and that's it. And then all of a sudden, like you take it away from somebody and they yeah. want more, you know, but like, <laughs> no, I'll be really good. I'll quit my job tomorrow. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, you know uh, Oh, dude. Well, you come across as like, you know what I mean? Just an honest, ethical, you know, super, super transparent dude. I mean, I think that's what you got to do, whether it's clients or recruiting both. That's a big message we can take away from today's interview. Are you a, uh, are you a big Rocky fan? Oh, <laughs> come on, bro. I, I love, hey, yo, uh, hey, yo, Adrian. Uh, yeah, I love, I love Rocky, man. I was, I, you know. Dude, I love it. I've got every single Rocky. I've seen every Rocky, you know, 37,000 times. Is, so. is, is four your favorite? Four is, you know, I'm a big one. I'm a big one and two guy, but okay. four is right up there. I mean, yeah, yeah the Russian, yeah, it's definitely That's good. Definitely legit, legit. Uh, Are you, you, you excited for uh, Rambo coming out here in like three days? Oh, yeah. Uh, Rocky, Rambo, Sylvester Stallone, you know Dude, it. Dude, I'm all about it, bro. I love it. You know it. <laughs> Absolutely. Dude, this has been awesome, buddy. In, any parting words, anything else you want to say? Um, if someone, you know, can, can someone go add you on Facebook? You know, I mean, what, what, what more would you like to add? Yeah, absolutely. You know, at the end of the day, and I think I think one thing and, and why I really, you know, I, I enjoy doing this interview with you, Cody, is I think you really make it about education. You know, I think there's just there's a lot of agents out there that are struggling that aren't happy where they're at. They're trying to, they're trying to find their way. Right. And I just think it's, we just, if we can just kind of give them some, if I can give anybody a couple nuggets, like, yeah, anybody can feel free to reach out to me. It doesn't matter. No affiliation. Like there's folks that I help out that don't work with us. I mean, it's just, it's just about being a good person, helping people out. So um, yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, I think uh, bit my, probably the, the biggest thing that I wanted to leave was um, you know, I, I really don't consider myself to be anything special. I just, I consider myself to be a regular guy that just kind of figured out how to, how to do this. And, um, and I just, I want to share my knowledge and I want to share um, my, my success in the industry with, with other folks. If I can, if I can just show people the way and help them put, you know, put them in a better situation for them and their families. Like that's kind of part of my whole giving back and helping people like the more agents that we help and get running you know, we always look at our average issue paid every month. And if it's not, you know, where, where it needs to be, um, and we need to be realistic about goals. So I think every agent out there, um, last parting words is know exactly what you're looking to get out of this, figure out what, you know, it's all about expectations. So figure out where you want to be two, three, four, five months from now. And if you're not where you want to be, you need, we need to seriously reevaluate. Um, because if you're not doing what you need to do for you and your family, um, that's a problem. And I think that's where at least, um, our organization, um, my organization differentiates. I don't want people to be, if they come in here with a set of goals and they come out with a list, which we make everybody do, and they're not, and we're not meeting those goals three, four, five, six months, just like personal training. If you're not where you want to be three, four, five, six months, we need to seriously reevaluate our, the, the plan, um, or this might not be something for you. So figure that out, figure out what your goals are, what you're looking to get out of this. And if you're not where you want to be, you need to reevaluate re because, um, we don't want, we, you know, I don't want people to be broke and, and unhappy where they're at. There's definitely, the, the, the industry has been very good to me. Um, and I can definitely, I can help as many agents as I, as I possibly can. So I love it, man. Thanks for being on buddy. I appreciate you having me, Cody, as always. You got it, bro. Thanks for watching insurance influencers. We'll see you next time.